So I'd like to take a look at quadratic graphs or parabolas and um, understand the transform uh, notation for writing their equations because you guys will need to know how to identify the equation of the graph by looking at it. So there's two types that we're going to look at. One is the vertex form and one is the x-intercept form. And the vertex form, this is basically your min or max if you know it. So remember a parabola will have a top if it's going downwards, and this would be your maximum point, and it would have a bottom being the minimum if it was pointing upwards. So we have a minimum point and a maximum point on a parabola. And so the vertex is basically that min or max point when you know it. And the format here for the equation is y is going to be equal to bracket x minus um, something squared plus something else. And what these tell us is our shifts. So if this is a minus, it is going to give you, um, it's going to move you to the right. And if this is a plus, it will move you to the left. And what I mean by you, I guess, is the vertex. It'll move the vertex to the left or to the right. And the plus term out the back, if this is a positive, it will move the vertex up. And if it's a negative, it will move the vertex down. So if we take a look at our two equations over here, um, the blue one is an example for this case where we can uh, clearly see what the vertex is. So you can see there's your vertex point there. So let's figure out what that point is. It is at negative 2, so it's to the left 2, and it is up. Watch the scale here, be careful, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, it goes in 2 as it's up 4, right, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we have up. So when I'd write that equation, I would say y is equal to x, and in this case it's gone left 2, so I would say plus 2, squared, and it's gone up 4, so I would say plus 4. So again, the plus meaning left, and why this is the case is because that value there, negative 2, when I put negative 2 into this, I get negative 2 plus 2, and that goes to 0. So that will help us um, when solving the equation. But that's why it's kind of the opposite signs. It's a negative 2 in value, but in the brackets you put the, neg the positive 2 there. So these ones are kind of opposites. And we'll look at a bunch more examples of that form in another video, but just to introduce the two forms and look at them side by side, if we take a look at the x-intercept form, this is where you know your intercepts on your x-axis. So again, your x-axis is the horizontal one, and if you know the points that your parabola goes through that graph, you can use this form. Um, so these would be two examples. If you knew those points, you'd be able to use it. And similar to what you have um, on the other equation, for the part inside the brackets, like we had here, a r negative number will move you right and a positive number will move you left. It's the same here. A negative number will move you right and a positive number will move you left. And this is where the x-intercepts will be. So it's moving the x-intercepts or showing you the location of the x-intercepts. So if I take a look at the red graph, as an example for this one, I can see one x-intercept there and another x-intercept there, and that's at 3 and 6. So my equation would be y is equal to x, and in this case I'm moving right 3, and right 6, so it's going to be a negative. Negative 3, comma, x minus 6. So here I've Again, going to use those negative 3 and the negative 6 in there because I want it to move to the right 3 and to the right 6 for where the two x-intercepts are. So in one case, you deal with the vertex, and the format of the equation is going to have a little squared in there somewhere. So that's one thing to note here. This form will have a squared um, you know, bracket squared or x squared. And this form doesn't usually have that. You'll notice there's no little tiny 2, no little squared subscript there or superscript there. So if you know, there is the potential that you can write um, some of these graphs using either form if you know both the vertex and the intercepts. But um, in that case, it's okay to just pick the one that you want to use and go for it. But here on the blue graph, again, we wouldn't be able to use the x-intercept form because you can see that blue graph never actually goes to the x-intercepts. 
or through the x-axis, it doesn't actually have any x-intercepts on the blue graph. Versus the red graph here, it goes to the x-axis, so I can use the x-intercept form. And if I knew exactly what that vertex was, I would be able to use the vertex form as well, but here I might just have to approximate that it's about four and a half to the right, and um, I wouldn't want to make guesses if I couldn't read it exactly, so the x-intercept form here is the better way to go. So these are the two different formats, and um, again, we'll take a look at a few examples here. Just keep in mind, it's kind of counterintuitive um, in terms of the positive and negatives inside of the brackets. So if you want to think about that, they're kind of opposite signs. If this is a positive 3 here, because I'm going to the right 3, I need to make sure I'm putting in the negative in the bracket. Um, and again, if you're going left, that it's the positive in the bracket. So we'll get some more practice with that in the next video as well.